How do we handle scope creep in Scrum? Well, we don't. Hold on. Are you saying when things change in our work, that's not called scope creep? Surely it exists. It doesn't. Stick around and let me explain why. And I'll also explain why some practitioners have a harder time getting this around their heads. So the term scope creep comes from project management if we're using waterfall. And what it means is that we are going to lock down requirements because we believe that we can determine what is going to happen at the start of the project. So if new scope comes in or things change, then it's creeping, hence scope creep. Whereas when we work with Agile or Scrum teams, we are not thinking about requirements as things that we lock down. We do not have the belief that we can determine the end of the project or deliver the product feature set, whatever it is at the start. We're expecting for things to change to some degree because Agile and Scrum is a learning approach to delivery. But wait, I'm working in an Agile team and the client, the customer, the product owner, whoever, keeps changing stuff on the acceptance criteria. Look, scope is creeping. I can understand why you think this, but that's not scope creeping. That's feedback coming in. Now, if you're asking the question, how do we deal with these changes because of new information, and maybe the customer or the product owner is being unreasonable and the goalposts keep moving, Ah, that's something else. Check out the blog in the comments so I can show you how you handle that. But feedback coming in and learning being generated, that's got nothing to do with scope creeping. That's got everything to do with how you handle the learning. Peace.